I look up there with planet Venus. Already nice and bright. The stuff there in the evening sky is a very easy object to look at. But I'm going to show you how you can look at the planets and then see the difference between the planets and the stars. There's a lot of wonderful planet viewing right now, both in the evening and morning sky. And I'm show you how to locate them uh, from your own backyard. One of the things you want to have first is your dreadstarmap.com and it's show you how to use it and how to read. And when you look at the map, you have a line called the ecliptic. And that is the path of the sun. And that's where you're going to find the planets. And then you also have the moon that's along that uh, location. And then we also have the planet sphere. And the planet sphere is very always useful. And on the planet sphere, you see the ecliptic. And that's where you're going to find the planets again. And if you have your very own binoculars, the binoculars are nice to have, but in, what I'm trying to do is show you how to uh, look at the object using your phone app. You have Skyview Free, uh, Skywalk, uh, Sky, Google uh, Sky are so many examples of ones that you can use uh, from your phone. It's a very powerful tool. And then also there is Solarium that is used on the phone. It has a lot of good data, a lot to look at. And so planet viewing is easy, it's fun, and then once you get out, you want to look at it again. And the first step you should take is to look at the planets. And the refresher, remember these planets in their order. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and then Neptune. The visible planets that we see in the nighttime sky are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and Jupiter, and Saturn. And these, close, these are the closest planets to the Sun and to the Earth. And here, you see the distance from the Sun and go from the Earth. And they switch around. And that's because uh, some of the planets are behind the Sun. Some planets are close to, in between us and the Sun and so on. So this is kind of a nice little uh, interactive site that you can see where the planets are in relation to the Sun and the Earth. And then, as far as size go, you see Jupiter all the way down to Neptune as far as distance. And so that's why Jupiter and Venus are bright. Then followed by Saturn and Mars and then Mercury. Uranus and Neptune are always going to be small and faint because they're so far away. And then speaking of bright, though the brightness, Venus is a beacon right now in the evening sky in the west. Then we have Jupiter in the morning sky, so that explains why it's so bright. And then we have Mercury, Mars, and following on that order. And those are the magnitude. So if it's a negative number, like negative 4.71, that means that it's very bright, any negative number. But then you get into the positive number, like for Mars, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. That means it's getting dim. And so this is a very useful uh, guide that you can look at for the arrangement of the planets. And I encourage you to use it in identifying the planets. Okay, now let's talk about where you're going to see the planets in the nighttime sky, or daytime for that matter. And here's a nice little chart that shows each of the planets when they're going to be visible or not. You see Mercury is not going to be visible. Um, let's check on Venus and go down to Venus to click on that. And this is Venus in real time. As you can get the rise and set, best time to view it at 8.21 p.m. You click on that. And there it is, there's Venus, and just above the western horizon. And so this is the ideal time to look at Venus. You can see the, all the information that you can use right there. And so this is a very useful guide. So you go back and go to Sky Tonight. Go right back down here. And uh, let's see, okay, let's take a look at Jupiter. And then Jupiter real time below the horizon. Let's go back to the best time, 6 o'clock in the morning. And go 6 o'clock, there it is, and show the location 
of the planet uh, in relation to the zodiacal sign. This is the ecliptic line right here. And the ecliptic line is on the map. And this is the path of this, the sun and the planet. This is where you're going to find them. And then you can use the zodiacal sign as your guide to help you find the location of the planet. And so uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, I guess it probably back at this location. And let's say um, you want to find out where the moon is. And there's the moon. And the best time, that's like 12 p.m. Well, it's coming up to the new moon. That's why it's poor visibility. And so you can see this is a very nice for tool to be able to see uh, when the planets are going to be visible. Now I want to show you the picture here that if you were outside and looking at the sky just after sunset, then you see all these bright points of light. So which is a planet and which is a star? Keep in mind these stars are light years away from us, so they're going to be much further away from the solar system than our own planets. They're, they're going to appear to be small points of light, and they would twinkle. And so the stars that are near the horizon are going to twinkle more than the stars overhead. And, more importantly, they don't move. Uh, compared to the planets, the planets are known as the wanderers. Okay? So Mercury and Venus will wander faster than Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So if you look at this picture, all these bright points of light are stars, okay? And then, then right here is Venus, and Venus is bright. And you also can see some color. And so when you see Venus, you see a bright white. You see Mars, you see red. And then you see Jupiter and Saturn, kind of a, a yellow, orangey hue. And so color and motion are important in, in understanding what you're looking at in the nighttime sky. And also, when you look for the planets, you look for the planets along the ecliptic, which is on the map. And then you recognize, perhaps, some of the uh, zodiacal sign as well, as that to go to where the planets wander against the stars in the background. Let's step outside and let's take a look at what we would see in our nighttime sky. And you're outside, you're facing towards the north. Just about sunset. Sunset just happened. And first thing you want to do is come, kind of orient yourself which direction you're facing. And so face towards the north. Uh, use familiar landmarks uh, from your home. Um, which you throw off and remember which way is north and south. And let's go into the evening a little bit further. And then just after sunset, the first stars and planets start to emerge. I've turned on the ecliptic line, which is that red line right there. And then face towards the north. And the first step you should take is to find the Big Dipper. And in the month of April, going into May you'll find that the Big Dipper is high above the northern horizon, nearly overhead. And there it is right there. This is actually an asterism. And this is a very useful guide to help you find other constellations and stars. And the Big Dipper itself is in the constellation called Ursa Major. And then if you take out the uh, these two stars right here, all over the imaginary line until you come to this star right here called Polaris. And this is our North Star, the star that sits above the Earth's North Pole. It's about 432 light years away from us. And this now will show you where North is. Find Polaris. Again, take these two stars, draw an imaginary line, and come to Polaris. And right here shows you. The height of the star is 45 degrees, which is our latitude for our location. So now you have north, and if you can't see it from your home, you use a landmark. Another thing to remember is that over in the south, we have the seasonal stars, uh, meaning that 
uh, the Earth is total of 23 and a half degrees, which is why we have 45 degrees. We have the seasonal stars, where uh, if we go around the sun, in the southern part of the sky, we get the zodiacal sign, which is a red line right here. Okay? And we see the recognizable uh, zodiac, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus. Okay? And this is where you'll find the planet and the path of the sun, and as well as the moon. Okay? So now we're going to go back and we see south. And south, one thing to remember, that the planets and the moon are generally always in the south. And then we also see the sun during the day. So that's another clue to finding out which direction you're facing. Okay? And another important one is that the sun just set in the west. Okay? So the sky will appear to be emerging from the east and setting toward the west. Okay? So you have your compass bearing and face towards the west. And remember that we find that we see these stars are much further away and they're smaller and they're, they tend to twinkle. Okay? And then we have Venus, it's an unmistakably bright right now. It's about a minus 4.7. And a minus means it's very bright. So Venus is an easy object to spot right away in the evening sky. And then nearby we have the star Sirius. And Sirius is the brightest star of the nighttime sky. And it's about a minus one and only 8.6 light years away. Which means that's why it's the brightest star of the nighttime sky. Not necessarily the largest, but it's the brightest. It's got a very high luminosity. Okay. And then you're facing Venus. Okay. Venus uh, what it's doing now is it's coming in around from the sun, and it's, it's brightest right now because it's at its largest angle away from the sun. And so that's why it's bright. And we're going to zoom in on it a little bit. Just use the scroll button. And as you can zoom in, and you get to see Venus, and you see the phase. Okay? And there's Venus. It's moving a little bit because that's how the Earth is turning. So you can see the phase right there. It's about 35%. Okay? And that's why we, Venus is bright. Venus is the second planet in an order from the Sun. It's the brightest uh, of all the planets other than Jupiter and the full moon. I'm trying to keep it up there so it doesn't go away. And so this is a fun thing to do. You can actually zoom in on it, but if you get too tight, this is what it would be in a really nice telescope. But if you get lights right about here, okay, this is kind of the view that you would get with a telescope. Uh, not much details at all, okay. But Venus goes around the sun about 244 days. So it's up there for several weeks, and then it starts to go down again. And that's what it's doing now. It's starting to head back towards the sun. Okay? And so that's because it's coming in between the Earth and the sun uh, for the next uh, few weeks. So we have a little bit of time to see Venus in our nighttime sky. And it's bright because 70% of the sunlight is reflected off the clouds of Venus. And sometimes referred to as either a morning or an evening star. You never see it at midnight, okay? So, the rest of pretty much this month going into May, you'll see it get lower and lower. Even as it gets lower, it tends to uh, get a little bit dimmer. Then it eventually will become our morning star. And sometime later uh, in June, right? So, uh, this is pretty common for the planet Venus, and in this area, you'll see some other bright stars okay, in the vicinity. So we have Orion that's just starting to disappear toward the west, and then we have Betelgeuse, the red giant star, and we have Rigel, and then we have Sirius, that's the brightest star of the nighttime sky, Procyon, and then we have Pollux 
Ancaster, Capella, and then right below Venus is got the constellation in that yeah, that won't show up is Aldebaran. It's right there, the eye of Taurus the Bull. So it's Venus. It's right in the border of Taurus the Bull and then back down to Rigel. So this is an area we see lots of bright stars. So why are you looking at Venus? You take a look at these bright stars in vicinity. And back up and you notice that Venus is pretty much the only visible planet in the evening at the moment. But let's take this and let's move a little bit forward into the night. There goes Venus. So Venus doesn't last all that long. And so right about there, we see it midnight. Okay. And then we go slowly. And you can see the zodiacal sign right there, uh, the constellation. The, the uh, ecliptic line. Hey, don't see any planet. Now, I will tell you, though, that uh, you're not a Neptune of faint. And this particular program uh, focused on the visible planets. And look over there in the east. Every once in a while, you see a shooting star because we're seeing the Lyrid meteor shower. So here it is about 4 o'clock. And right about a few couple of hours before sunrise, you face towards the east. Okay? Now, if you recognize the constellation out there, let me go back to the north. And in the north, you notice the Big Dipper. It went high overhead. But if the Earth turns counterclockwise, okay, so the Big Dipper goes from nearly overhead, now leaning towards the west. Okay? And then there's Polaris, so right where it is, 45 degrees for our latitude back over towards the east. And in the eastern part of the sky, we have three planets, right? And Mars, I think, is hiding from us. And let's so let's move back just a little bit. There we go. And we're going to take a look at Jupiter and Saturn. And Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. And it, it's also very bright, and it's bright because it's reflecting off the clouds of Jupiter and the gas. And Jupiter is going to be a prominent planet uh, in the morning sky. You click on it, and it's about a minus two. And it's fairly bright, only 4.9 astronomical unit, meaning four times the uh, just between the Earth and the Sun. It's almost a five. Okay? So it's at a 99% phase. So that means that Jupiter uh, is pretty much like a full moon. Okay? So if you zoom in on Jupiter, and if you have binoculars, you can actually see the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Okay? And there they are. We have... Coming up, if I can get one more, so that is, DB, but there's one more. There it is. Okay. If they take a look at that, okay, you have Jupiter, and then we have Io, Callisto, Ganymede, and Europa. You can actually see these in binoculars. And when you look at it, um, you see Io, Callisto. Io is the closest moon to Jupiter. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. And then you have Europa, which is the icy moon. And then way out there is Callisto. Okay. So for Jupiter, being the largest planet in the solar system, it also has what we call the shortest day. So for a single day, it only takes Jupiter roughly about 10 hours. So if you want a short work day, go to Jupiter. Okay. And so because it turns 10 hours, the moon changed their position relative to the planet by the hour and by the day. So uh, this is how Sir Galileo was able to use this model to help prove that, that the planets have moons, but the sun is the center of our solar system. 
and the Earth and the other planets revolve around it. Okay? So this is a fun object to look at in binoculars and telescope. And if you're lucky with a telescope, okay, you can see the red spot. So it looks like the red spot is on the other side in this particular view. Okay? And so Jupiter is always everybody's favorite object to look at in a star party. So Jupiter is right about this location. There's Sagittarius, which is a teapot. And this is, by the way, the center of our Milky Way, right above the teapot, 30,000 light years away. And let's go over to Saturn. And Saturn is about a 1, plus 1, and 9 astronomical units. And Saturn is a beautiful ring planet, second largest planet in the solar system. And in telescope view, it's bright maybe half the brightness of Jupiter. If you zoom in on a telescope or binoculars, you can actually see the ring. And because the planet is totaled at about roughly uh, around uh, 25 degrees, you can see the face of the ring uh, towards, the, the plant, uh, towards the Earth. And the largest moon, Titan, is easily seen in binoculars. All these other moons, it's possible to see it, but from the city location, it's pretty tough. But you can definitely see Titan. You can see the ring of Saturn. You see how quickly uh, the sky's moving in real time. Okay? So if you are using a telescope, it's hard to keep that in view without a motor drive. Okay? And so back up again. Okay. Saturn and Jupiter are going to be about five degrees apart until about June. Here's the satellite. And they're going to be about uh, five degrees apart. Let's see if I can catch that. Ooh, that. Ooh, that's a good catch. One in the satellite. So that's a fun thing to do. So we have these two uh, planets. And then coming in June, July, and August, they'll be about six degrees apart. Okay. And so... These are going to be real showstoppers uh, this summer uh, because they're so close to each other in view. And now we can take a look at and find Mars. Okay, then Mars is uh, only about a 1. It's 1 1.2 astronomical units. And it's going to be to the left of Jupiter and Saturn, roughly about 10 degrees. Okay. And Mars, you can identify it's going to be reddish in color. It's half the size of, of the Earth. It's known as a rocky red planet. You're going to be hearing about Mars in July. And then if all goes to plan, they're going to send a Mars Perseverance to the planet. And it could be another rover. It's the most uh, visited planet in the solar system. And it'll be in the morning sky until roughly late July. In August, he'll eventually catch up with Jupiter and Saturn. And then, if you zoom in, take a look at Mars. Mars is a rocky red planet and half the size of the Earth. Uh, it's tough to see, and you'll see that it had two moons. Um, and you can't really see these in binoculars, telescope. They're just being labeled for you. And there are the two moons of Mars. And Mars appeared as a red dot, right? And so Mars is definitely in view. And you'll see it just before sunrise. It's in the constellation of Capricornus. And so we have Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. It's in view uh, in the morning sky. So it's definitely worth a look. And now for the fun of it, I'm going to move into the daytime. And to go into the daytime, okay, there's the sun right on the ecliptic. And by the way, strongly, because never look at the sun directly without any filter. Okay? So this shows you the plane of the solar system right there. Okay? And this is the ecliptic. Right? Now, you see right there is Mercury. 
And so Mercury is making its way into the morning sky. It'll come up a little bit later in May and join in with Mars. So that's where Mercury is right now. It's not visible and it's too close to the sun. But it only takes Mercury 88 Earth days to get around the sun once. And if I continue to move forward a little bit, let me show you something here. It is possible to see Venus in the daytime. There is Venus, and it is possible, but you have to kind of uh, plan ahead to be able to see Venus in the daytime. Again, when I emphasize, you don't want to use, uh, if you have binoculars, you need to be able to look at it away uh, from the sun. Okay? And so this is how you view the planets, both in the daytime and the nighttime sky. And it's a great experience once you get to see the planets from your own home.